Alright guys, we're going to take some notes on classification today. Okay, so before we start, what exactly is classification? That's what this whole unit is about. And guys, it's to cl classify is to put things into groups. And we do this in order to show relationships. And we're going to um, start off really broad and we will get more specific as the week goes on. Okay, uh, vocab word you need to know is taxonomy. Um, this is where we assign each organism a universally accepted name. And this is basically kind of like the study or the science of classification. So it's kind of like name giving. It's the science of classification. Okay, another term to know is binomial nomenclature. Bi means two. Nomial is, or nomenclature is naming. So this is a two name naming system. Alinius is considered the father of classification like Darwin was the father of evolution. And basically in this two name naming system, we give each species two names and it's their genus comes first, then their species name. Okay, it's important when we write this, we write it the correct way. So when you're writing the genus and species, it does need to be italicized. Um, sometimes we'll have, it, have you underline it, but for the most part, we'll be looking at italicizing it. Um, you capitalize the genus and leave species uncapitalized. So you can see uppercase and lowercase here. It's usually in Latin or Greek. So some examples here. Bear is Ursus Arctos. So notice the U is capital. A is not. Um, and it's italicized. And then human is Homo sapiens. Okay, let's match the scientific name. So I'm going to give you a few minutes. Um, see if you can match number one through five with A, B, C, D, and E. And see if you can figure out. Really pay attention to the names. Some of them give you hints. Okay, so I'll give you a minute or two to do that. Okay, let's see how we did here. All right, so this first one, look at obster cans. Um, that is going to be the midwife toad. This is what a midwife does. They help deliver babies. So your OBGYN, that's where that comes from. Okay, Batula peprifera, paper birch. You see paper here. Beta vulgaris, that is going to be a beet. Hyper nigrum, so it'd be like a darker color and pepper, so black pepper. Docus carota would be a carrot. So um, you may see some of these on the test or a homework quiz. I might give you some examples. You should be able to figure out what the letter or what the word would be. Okay, so there's seven taxa levels. And they go from biggest, so like the most broad, to the most specific. So it goes kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And you will need to know these in order. So a good way to remember this is King Philip came over from Great Spain. You might want to write that down. That's a good way to remember that. King Philip came over for from Great Spain. Or you can do King Philip came over for Great Spaghetti. However you would like to remember that. Okay, so classification. We have some animals up here. Notice they're all in the animal kingdom. Later in the week, we'll be, learn specifically about the phylum chordata. That means they have a vertebrae. They have a backbone. Okay, they're all in the same class. We can see that they're all mammals. And then here's where the next one, we're getting a little bit more specific, it starts to branch off. They're all carnivores except for the killer whale. Okay, family, they're all going into different families except for the dog and wolf, more in the canine. They actually have the same genus and then they have different species. So out of all of these, the dog and the wolf would be the most closely related. So that's kind of how you do this. Um, you go from the broadest, which is the kingdom, all the way down to the most specific. And so for this unit, we're going to study all the kingdoms. We're going to study all the phylums. We'll do a little bit of classes, but we're not going to go more specific than that. Okay, so you try. I'll give you a minute to do this. Start with the kingdom and work your way down to the species. This is us, okay? This is a human. So see if you can put these in order from kingdom to species.
Okay, kingdom, animalia. Phylum, chordata, remember that's backbone. King Philip came, would be class, mammalia, we're mammals. Okay, order is primates. Family is a hominid, genus, homo, sapiens, species. Okay, so today's notes, we're just going to talk about the kingdoms, and later in the week, we will add the um, phylums, okay? So I'm sure you guys have heard of these. There's five main kingdoms. I'm sure you've heard of animal, plants, um, fungi, but we also have protists and monorans, and this is going to be a big part of activity one um, on your homework quiz. Okay, let's start with monorans. Um, these are bacteria. They're prokaryotic. You guys remember what a prokaryotic cell is? And pro, okay, what is pro? No nucleus, okay? So bacteria, they do not have a nucleus. They're unicellular, only one cell, okay? Um, these guys can be either or. Some are autotrophic. If they make their own food, others must obtain nutrients from other organisms, okay? So they could be either or. Some example, okay, bacteria, um, this is a staph infection. Um, I mean, you guys have seen bacteria, but any type of bacterial infect infection. Um, okay, protists, examples, amoeba, paramecium, slime molds, and algae. Um, also, about the bacteria, guys, this is the only kingdom that are prokaryotic, so that kind of helps you separate it from the rest. All the rest are going to be eukaryotic. Okay, so even though these are eukaryotic, they have a nucleus, most of them are unicellular. There might be a few that are multicellular, but for the most part, they're going to be unicellular. Same thing, they can be autotrophic or heterotrophic. Okay, there's an amoeba. Here's one. Kind of splitting in half there. I think I have one of it engulfing. Oh yeah, here's it. That would be a heterotrophic protus because it's getting nutrients from another source. Here's another one, heterotrophic protus. Notice it's one cell and it does have a nucleus. Here's another one. I think that might be a euglena. Okay, fungi. These are eukaryotic. They're mostly multicellular. They are heterotrophic. That means they do not make their own food. Examples would be like mushroom and yeast. Here's some examples. Okay, plants are eukaryotic. They're multicellular. These are autotroph. They make their own food. Uh, plant, flowering plants, mosses, ferns, trees. There's a lot we can name here. There's some examples. Now, this one is interesting. This one can be heterotrophic. Um, this is a carnivorous plant. Um, really cool. It actually has acids in it. So like when bugs like ants or, you know, flies or something falls into it, it just completely disintegrates the bug and then it absorbs the nutrients. So carnivorous plants could be also be heterotrophic, but for the most part, plants are going to be autotrophic. Animals, we have eukaryotic, multicellular, um, all heterotroph, sponges, worms, insects, fishes, birds, mammals. I mean, we can list tons of animals here and here's some examples. All animals. Yes, even a sponge and sand dollar doesn't seem like they would be, but they are animals. 